Hi, grade eights. Um, so it's uh, it's a beautiful Sunday um, Sunday morning here, and I'm just going to go through our algebra review um, for this unit. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of the routine strategies that we learn, and then I'm going to also go through a couple of word problems um, similar to the ones we've done in class that will be very similar to the ones you'll be getting on the test, so not to worry. Um, as I mentioned, there are several ways of solving various word problems in in, uh, that you deem in the algebra unit and um, I'm not going to specify which one to use. Um, I really just want to improve our problem solving um, so whichever way you would like to use um, you can. Um, so let's get started um, because there's quite a lot to get through. Um, so first things first on this page here um, we're going to look at the basic kind of step by steps um, that we do when we're tackling some basic algebra. Um, so let's look at the first one here. We have 3n plus 4 equals 22. And when you're showing your work um, in the test or in any question, um, you really have to show step by step what you do um, so that you can communicate your understanding and your thinking. Um, so right now, we want to isolate n. So we want to isolate this n. However, it's got some baggage. Um, so our baggage right now is the 3 that's attached to it. And we also have a plus 4 here that we want to get rid of too. Um, just like in class, I mentioned that you can kind of use the analogy that the four is maybe your parents living downstairs in your basement and the three is the kids that are attached to your hip and you want to get, you want to break free from all of them. So you need to isolate N. And there's a couple of steps you need to do in order to do that. In order to get rid of the plus four first. So we always get rid of the baggage that's kind of on the outskirts or on the fringe. So we want to get rid of the plus four. And from our integer units, we know that in order to get a zero, um, we have to do the opposite of what's, uh, what are we given. So we're given plus four, we have to subtract four. So if we subtract four, we do it from both sides. So always remember both sides of the equal sign, we have to do the very same. So our second line will be, now that they've cancelled out, 3n equals 18. And then we have our last bit of our baggage here, which is the 3, which is multiplied by the n to get 18. So how do we get rid of the 3? We do the opposite. So right now, 3 is multiplying by n, so we have to divide. And whatever we do on one side of the equal sign, we have to do on the other. The 3s cancel, and you're left with n equals 6. So there are two basic steps for isolating the variable really really important to show clearly what you do in each step and um, I would even suggest when you're doing it in your analysis to write down a little sentence just right beside it what you're actually doing. Um, the second thing we're going to look at over here on the right is if you have some brackets and you have um, a 4 on the outside so the 4 is attached to the brackets and just like we had over here with our 3n the 3 was attached to the n so it was multiplying the 4 is also multiplying by everything inside the bracket. So we do a distribution rule, it's called, where we have to multiply four by n, and we also have to multiply four by two. So if we do that, we get four n plus eight equals 40. And now we're back um, to where we were at the start of the first one, where we have four n plus eight equals 40. We wanna isolate n, so we get rid of the eight first, by subtracting 8 on both sides, and you're left with 4n equals 32. You want to get rid of that baggage attached to the n, so you have to divide by 4. Make sure you do to both sides, and you're left with n equals 8. So these are really just a couple of uh, routine kind of steps that we do in algebra in order to isolate the variable and solve our final part of our question. Okay, um, so let's move. Um, we're going to do one of these questions, um, and this one's called Sister, Sister. So it's one we did similar in class, and um, there's a couple of ways to do it. We're going to do it two ways. We're going to do it using the algebraic way, and we're going to also do it using the Singapore bar model method. So using the bar model uh, to represent and show our answer. So let's start. Um, first thing we do um, in any of these word problems is we have to declare our variables. So we have to state what our variables are. 
Um, so we all, a little clue I gave in class was always look at the very last sentence or very last question. Find their present ages. And that's going to help you determine the variables. So we look at the last sentence and we say find their present ages. So they must be um, Renee's present age and the younger sister's present age. So let's say that. So we'll say R for Renee is going to be equal to uh, present age of Renee. Remember to be very specific about um, your variables. Don't just say R equals Renee, because it could be anything about Renee. It could be the color of her hair, the amount of shoes she has. You have to be specific, and that clue is always in the last sentence of the question. Let's have a look. So we know R is Renee, the pre present age of Renee, and then let's say S is present age of little sister. Okay, great. Um, so let's do it algebraically first and we'll look at what we're first given in the question. And we're given Renee is six years younger than her little sister. Uh, sorry, I spelled that wrong. Uh, she's going to be six years older. That would make her an older sister. Pardon my mistake. So Renee is six years older than her little sister. Um, let's see if we can write that down algebraically. So Renee is six years more. So we can say R is going to be our little sister's age, plus it's going to be six years more. So now we have one equation. Let's call this equation one. Um, now we look. After 10 years, the sum of their ages will be 50. Now remember, um, in 10 years' time, both sisters will have aged 10 years. So let's try and represent that. So Renee in 10 years is going to be R plus 10. And we have uh, the little sister in 10 years is going to be S plus 10. And we're told the sum of their ages, which means we add them together, the sum of their ages is going to be 50 years old. And now we can start maybe, well, let's group together some like terms and get our equation two. Um, so we have an R and we have an S, that's fine. But we have some numbers that we can group together. So a 10 plus 10 is 20. So let's write that down. R plus 20 plus S equals 50. If we want to get rid of that 20 on that side, on the left, we can subtract 20. Let's do it from both sides, and we're left with R plus S equals 30. Okay, and this is going to be our equation 2. Now, this is where some people kind of get a little bit stuck, and they think, right, I have two equations. Equation 1 right here, and equation 2 down here. How do we solve for R and how do we solve for S? Um, and we do that, and it's a big word we learn, and we do that using substitution. So let's look at equation two. We have R and we have S. Is there a way that we can substitute in for one of these? Instead of an R, write something, or instead of an S, write something. And we can. Let's look back at equation one. We know that R is the same as writing S plus six. So instead of R down here, let's just sub in S plus 6. So let's see. Instead of R, we're going to write S plus 6. Then plus our S equals 30. So let me just minimize this a bit, make this a little smaller. Perfect. Um, so now let's group together our S's. S plus S is 2S plus 6 equals 30, and let's, uh, let's isolate the variable, just like our first slide. To get rid of the 6, we go negative 6 on both sides, and we're left with 2s equals 24. Divide by 2 to get rid of the 2, and we're left with s equals 12. 
So what is S again? We know S is the present age of the little sister. And remember, that's why we be, we're so specific about our variables because sometimes students can say, oh, S is 12. Is that for 12, 10 years' time or is it the present age? We not, we're not sure. So it's clear, it's really important that it's, you clearly show your variable at the start. So if S is 12, we know Rene up here is s plus 6. So let's write that. Rene is s plus 6. We know s is 12. So Rene equals 12 plus 6. Rene is equal to 18. So our two sisters present age. Rene is 18 and the little sister is 12. So that's the algebraic way to do it. Um, what we're going to look at now is how we can do that um, visually. Okay, so let's have a look and see if we can do it visually. And we're going to do that using the bar model. And I'm going to, first of all, draw what um, uh, Renee's, uh, or his little sister's age is going to be. Okay, so little sister is going to be this line here, the present age of the little sister. All right, um, that's going to be the bar model up there. And let's write in our variable. Our variable is going to be S. Okay, and we're told that Renee is six years older. So let's draw another bar model for Renee. She's going to be the same as the little sister. Same bar. Okay. And she's also going to be plus 6. Okay, so let's draw that in. S and plus 6. So we can see clearly from the bar model that this is little sister and Renee's is the little sister plus 6, six years. And um, now we're told in 10 years' time that... Um, the sum of their ages is going to be 50 years old. So let's again just change our bar model for what 10 years time will look like. So let's do the little sisters first. So the little sister is going to be the very same but in 10 years time like everyone else she's going to have 10 added on to it. Uh, plus 10. Okay and Renee is going to be 10 years older also. So let's draw her a bar model. So just exactly like it was above. S plus 6, but she's also going to be plus 10 because it's 10 years later. And we're told that the total uh, age of these combined sisters 10 years later is going to be Do this 50 years old. Okay, so now let's group together the S's, the numbers, and we can write our final equation. It's as easy as that. So let's see what we have. How many S's do we have? We have one, two, so let's write that down. Two S. How many numbers do we have? We have 10, 6, and 10. That's 26. So 2S plus 26 equals our total years is 50. Let's try and isolate the variable. Get rid of the 26 and we subtract 26 from both sides. And we're left with 2s equals 24. To get rid of the 2 we have to divide on both sides remember. And we're left with s equals 12. And if s is 12, if we go back to our bar model, Renee is going to be 12 plus 6, which is 18. So there's our answer using the visual bar model method. I really like this strategy. Um, it really kind of gives you a good, clear visual. You don't have to mess around with too many um, equations and substitution, and that can get sometimes fairly uh, tricky. So this is another way of doing it. And um, as I said, I won't specify which you have to use, but I'm just trying to give you some options. Okay, and the last question we're going to look at today um, to give us some practice and review for our test on Tuesday is the cows and the chickens question. 
So Farmer Joe has cows and chickens on his farm. One day he counts 76 legs and 24 heads. How many cows, how many chickens are on the farm? Now we did this question in class and there are several ways of going about tackling this question. Um, some people drew out a table. Some people actually um, drew out little cows and little chickens and started crossing out cows and adding chickens or vice versa in order to satisfy the criteria. All of this is fine, okay? I really want to stress that when we're tackling algebra word problems, it's really about problem solving and not the strategy you use. I don't really mind what strategy you use as long as you explain your thinking very clearly. And if you can think of a second way to do it to show you're right, please make sure you do that. Um, so, Farmer Joe, let's start. First thing, and as in most questions we do for, for word problems, we have to state what the variables are. Again, our clue is going to be in our last sentence. So let's have a look. How many cows and how many chickens are on the farm? So we're going to say C for cows, for, but what about the cows? C equals number of cows. Very important. Again, if we just say C equals cows, it could be the amount of legs the cows have, it could be the color of the cow, it could be how many, uh, how many cows have blue eyes. It really has to be specific when you're saying what the variable is. So C in this case is the number of cows. And we're going to say maybe K for number of chickens. Okay, and first things first, now we go through our question and see, well, what are we given or what are we told? And that's, that's again, why we use grasp. It's really, you're given a lot in the question. And um, he counts 76 legs and 24 heads. So if there's 24 heads, there's 24 animals. So if we know that there's C is the number of cows and K is the number of chickens, our first equation could be C plus K equals 24. And we can call this maybe the animal equation. All right, and now we're told something about legs. Um, so let's look, see what we're given and what we know already from our prior knowledge. If C is the number of cows, how many legs does each cow have? We know the answer is four. So we're gonna to have to write an equation where we're gonna have each cow is gonna have four legs. So it's four per cow. So how do we write that when we're writing an equation? And we write that as four times C. So it's four legs per cow. So each cow times four gives the number of legs per cow. And um, plus number of legs per chicken is two. So we're gonna say four C plus two K. And that equals our total number of legs, which is 76. And this is our leg equation. All right, and again, this step here now, well, a lot of students can get to this step where they generate their two equations and they kind of get stuck on where to go from here. Um, and again, we use this big word that's called substitution. Okay, however, <clears throat> we want to substitute in for a C or in for a K, but right now we don't have C isolated or K isolated. So looking at our animal equation, and I'll rewrite it again even, C plus K equals 24. How could we isolate C or K? So let's go with isolating C. How do we get C on its own? Now if we look, we say, right, we've got baggage. We've got that K. How do we get rid of the K? We simply subtract it making sure we subtract it from both sides. And we're left with C equals 24 minus K. Now you think, right, let's look at my leg equation. Let's look at here where we have two variables. Instead of writing C now, we have shown that C is the same as writing 24 minus K. So let's sub this back into the leg equation. I'm going to write it here. Sub into leg equation. And we're left with, let's see, four, and, and let's underline this for blue. And instead of C, we're going to write 24 
minus k plus 2k equals 76. Um, and now we're look, we have to look at our distribution rule that we learned at the very first slide and multiply 4 by whatever is in the brackets right here. So if we look, um, we have 4 times 24, um, which is uh, 96. And then we have 4 times negative k, which is going to be negative 4k. This is why we did integers beforehand, plus a positive times a negative is a negative, and plus 2k equals 76. And we're getting closer to that, um, isolating that one variable so we can solve for the rest. So let's keep going. We'll make this a little bit smaller if I can. Okay, great. So let's group together our k's and our numbers. Negative 4k plus 2k is going to be 96. Negative 2k equals 76. We want to get rid of the 96 here, isolate the, trying to isolate that k, getting rid of that baggage. In order to do that, we subtract 96 from both sides. And we'll bring it over here. And we're left with negative 2k equals 76 minus 96 is minus 20. And we want to isolate for k, so we have to get rid of the negative 2, which is multiplying by it. So we divide by negative 2 on both sides. The negative 2's cancel, and we're left with k is equal to negative divided by a negative always gives a positive. So we're left with positive 10. And we look back to what our k is, and that represents the number of chickens. And then we look back at our animal equation and say, right, if we have a total number of animals of 24, 10 are chickens, our C, our cows, must be 24 minus 10, which is 14. And that gives our total number of cows. So I hope... Let's just... Sorry. So I hope that you um, get a better understanding of this. Um, hopefully this helped you out a bit. Um, there are, as I said, lots of um, questions that we've done and we've tried on posting on D2L, along with some other tutorial videos with me, uh, some mo a money question, for example, um, that you should maybe have a look at as well. Um, I'm just about to post this video on D2L, along with some word problem uh, review questions that you're going to, you can look at this evening and we'll look at in class tomorrow. Um, but for now, have a great Sunday, a sunny Sunday, and we shall see you all tomorrow.